Doing, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, this is William coming at December the 5th, um, 2020, Saturday, Saturday morning. How y'all doing this morning? <laughs> um, um, I'd like to, um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right on into the point that I'm getting at this morning. Um, y'all, the two videos that came before this video where I had a video of my, my five children, um, and a video of my little baby boy on the bed, you know, holding his bottle. Uh, I want to draw y'all attention to the video with the five, all five of my children in it. Those are my five, my two little oldest boys, and then the three that I got by my ex-wife. This was the family when she left. My, my little boy was at four months old. You remember I told you he was almost four months old when he when she left us, not us, you know. And um, and um, and y'all see that video there that you know this is the family that um, Sophia Crawford broke up ripped apart this is the family the five children that y'all see in that video is my five children um that i had and that i took and, that i took care of from the day one they was born you know until um judge crawford decided she wanted to rip my family apart you know for the likes of my ex-wife and the devilment that she was doing you know and in light of that i'm gonna say this y'all you know don't let the devil use you you know the bible tells us don't don't let the devil use your memory don't use your memory to mischief to hurt no one you know what i'm saying you know and that's including your mind because the mind is a part of you so when you let the devil go up in your mind and use that mind to hurt people you know that's that's what the devil do so now that's why i say you ain't that person that we're looking at that we fighting is that is that is that mind that the, the devil in that mind and then rip that person's mind up and got a whole lot of other constituent devils to help them. You know what I'm saying? So now this was my family, y'all. This was my family before my family was broken up. And you see how lovely my family is together. They was bonded together because my two little oldest boys was there from day one, from the, from the other three when they was born. You know, all of them, all my family was united, you know, and they was bonded in my home, born in my home and raised in my home. Until this um, evil devil that was in the mind of some people, the, including the judge, ripped my family apart. Just ripped my family, just ripped them apart. They didn't care nothing about ripping my, uprooting my children out their permanent residence and ripping them apart. So that's what Judge Sophia, Sophia Crawford did to me um, at, the, at the help of the devil. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying on... Um, and then I'm gonna bring y'all up to date on some other stuff. Now, if this happened, I don't know yet because I'm, I'm, I'm like I told y'all, I was catching up with everything as I'm going. So now, um, um, another thing I want to catch up with now, now my little boy, one of my little boys, you know, uh, the ex-wife getting a disability check for him, right? So now my thing is, I'm gonna find out what kind of disability check she getting for him because you know what, you know, my son ain't disabled. You know, he got a, he don't move, he ain't able to move one of his arm like he should. And I'm going to tell y'all the reason for that. And wait, let me go back real quick. In court, I remember my ex-wife saying something about my son having some kind of herb palsy. Well, I'm going to tell y'all that's a straight lie. And I'm going to tell you what happened to my son at birth. I was there, stood over her when, she, when he came out and everything. Let me tell you what happened. Well, let me tell you what happened before. The doctors had done told my ex-wife that she, my boy, my baby boy was gonna be big, and that they recommend giving her a C-section. And she, I, she, I, she told them that um, you no, know, she want to push out, have a vaginal pregnant. She want to have uh, our boy vaginally. And this is the information I didn't know, right? So when at, at the delivery. Um, it was a hard labor. So the doctor was pulling on my boy, pulling, 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 pulling him so hard to the point where he pulled one of his arm, pulled the nerve, pulled his nerve loose in one arm and broke his other arm. I'm talking about this at the time he was coming out. Okay, when they finally got him out, which took a while, when they finally got him out, the damage was already done. The, the, the doctor had did... Now, the doctor had did the damages to one arm pulling his nerve and the other arm he broke. Okay, so my my, my son went through a terrible time with the, with delivery. My, my boy did. So now, at that, at, I think at that young age, they wanted to do some type of surgery, you know, take some kind of um, nerves out of his leg, 
put in his own, like a, about an all day surgery type thing, you know, to get movement and stuff in his own. You know what I'm saying? And I made the decision, no, you know, my child ain't finna go up under that kind of surgery. He had a hard birth. Now he not finna go up under no kind of knife for y'all to see him have a knife on. And then, and then the thing was, I asked the doctor, I said, well, do y'all guarantee he have any movement in his own? They said, nope. He said he probably likely won't have no no kind of movement in his own. And that's what the doctor said now. So I told the doctor, Duke, Chapel Hill, I said, well, no, nah, we ain't going to do no surgery because let me tell you something. I've seen some of them kids that had went through that surgery at Duke, and probably some of y'all have seen kids like that, and at Chapel Hill, and that had had that surgery, and um, they had no movement, not once so ever. Like a dish rag. They're like you throw a dish rag on the table. That's how they arm was. And I want, see, my boy had me move in his arm. He could move his arm and everything, lift his arm up and all. So I'd rather for him to keep, have that, the, the, the mobility that he had than for him to go up on a knife and got and had, and then come out with no mobility. So I didn't do that. My son can move his arm right to this day. He, he, I try to get him to stretch it out as much as he can. You know, I work with him with him whenever I'm around him. And um, but now from my from what I'm finding out now, my uh, ex wife is getting disability, then apply for disability and getting disability form. Now, mind you, now y'all, let me tell y'all something. Everything that that woman's supposed to do concerning my children, everything that she does concerning my children, she's supposed to keep me 100% informed of all everything. You know, and if it, I can go back and get the record, I can read it to y'all everything. But see, such an evil person. I don't know nothing. I'm finding all this stuff out on the back burners. I ain't finding that she ain't telling me nothing. She ain't keeping me update with nothing concerning none of my children. Doctor visits, nothing. So now she, now I'm finding out she getting disability for one of my boys. And if it's Earl Palsley that she getting disability based on Earl Palsley, that's a lie. And I'm going to show find out from the Social Security Administration because I'm going I'm to find out what the deal is with that. You understand what I'm saying? Because you don't got no Earl Palsley. He would, he would, mm, he was damaged from birth by the doctor trying to deliver him. That's what happened to my son. And I go back to Duke Chapel Hill, and I go back to Moore County where he would deliver that, and I get his doctor, I get his records. Because look, look, let me tell you what happened after that. You know, I said, well, you know, I, I, I was like, well, man, it's the doctor fault that my child hurt, right? So I had my wife. I said, well, look, we're gonna sue this doctor. You know what I'm saying? So we went in and found the lawyer. And um, lawyer took the case now. The lawyer took the case against the doctor. And um, after a while, you know, I said, yeah, you know, because this doctor could have, you know, did, you know, he could have did better than that. He, you know, hurt my child. So after a while, the lawyer contacted something, this letter back to us, right? And said, well, we're going to be dropping y'all as a client. Uh, we're not going to proceed no further in this matter. And, um, and they gave the reason why. And here was the reason why. The lawyer said that your wife at that time, my ex-wife, had told her that the daughter had told her that our boy was going to be big and that they recommended having um, a C-section because he was too big. And they said for reason for the, for, for that reason, they was going to discontinue investigating our case was because she was given the opportunity to have a C-section. I didn't ever know that. See, I didn't ever know that the doctor told her that our boy was going to be too big that they recommend for her to have a C-section. So I didn't know that. I didn't know that until that came through through, through and by through the lawyer that we had. Because that's why the lawyer didn't proceed no further. In the case was because the doctor had replied that, you know, everything that they done, they did everything for my child not to be to come out like that, to be born that way because they recommended the C-section. So now y'all y'all remember now y'all remember I'm telling you now this woman is about money and about that's all she she don't want the kid that she loved the kids she want the kid because she, she so so she can live her life the way she want to the she in other words she want to use the kid for her benefit for her gain she don't love them you know what I'm saying you know cause don't no parent love when you love your child you know you do what you can to help and better your child and that's what I was doing you know. I was working with my son, you know, he was using his, and he's still using his, his own the well from the last time I seen him anyway, because I tried to get him to, you know, like this, this own right here. See here, all right, I'm going to give y'all an example how his own is. All right, look at my arm here. All right, you see this arm right here? I can raise it all the way up just like that, right? Okay, you see that? Now watch this. 
I'm gonna go back to now go to this arm. He can get this arm up to about right here. He can't stretch it all the way up like that. He'll get it to about right here. And that's that's how far he can. But now I can take my hand and stretch it on out. But as far as him doing it himself, he get his arm up to about right there. So he got mobility in his arm. He got he got mobility. He can move his fingers. He can move his arm halfway up like this. You know, he can move. I mean, he can move. If, if any of y'all ever seen my child, y'all 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 done saw it. Y'all done see his mobility and how he is. So now she getting disability for him that she hadn't not made me aware of or anything. And look, let me tell you something now. This is what this is what Sophia Croft did. You see how the you know, even though Sophia Croft did do all the evil stuff to me, but this woman is doing the rest because you know what? She know what the order says. And she know what she's supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? But there again, I, I don't know. I don't know when it comes down to a mental mind. I don't know. You know, because a mental ill person, I don't know how they think, what they think, why they think, and, and what these intentions are. So that part I can't answer. But I know as for the order in this case, she's supposed to keep me 100% informed of any doctor visit, any anything. I'm talking about all things. Food stamps, social service. She getting food stamps for my children. I don't know nothing about that. But so all this stuff is on the back burner that I'm finding out. You know what I'm saying? So she ain't keeping me informed in no kind of way about nothing that she doing with my children. Nothing that she doing with my children. And I, and here's another thing I want to bring to y'all attention that I found out, y'all. I found out that um some close people, right, saying that um over there tell y'all this saying, saying that um she is trying to um do her little thing and um go back to court some kind of way and get um full custody where she could leave with my children. <laughs> yeah, I put it to this way. You're going to go back to court, but it ain't going to be for that one. <laughs> I tell you that much. <laughs> so um so that's the that's the information under the table that's coming to me, you know. <clears throat> so listen at this y'all, I'm going to tell y'all something else. Now, I through the room, y'all remember I was talking earlier. I was talking y'all about my uncle, right, and how he violated me to he, you know, his nephew that he hurt. You know what I'm saying for the likes of my ex-wife. But now, now I'm getting some information now that you know that my uncle is staying with my ex-wife. That's the information that's been coming back to me. That's the information. Now, the site. Look, look. Let me give y'all a quick history. What I, what I, in, in case of some of y'all have have forgot or some of y'all that don't know now um my, my uncle was in prison for almost 30 years for murder and this same ex-wife of mine used that murder charge against him when i helped my uncle get out of prison and get, had him paroled to my house uh i was with my ex-wife at the time so my ex-wife when she tried to run her off of my daughter and i took her butt to court she used um that murder rap against my uncle for my daughter not to be around him and the judge agreed with her judge agreed with her that my daughter not to be nowhere around my uncle. And this is the same uncle now. If this be true, this is the same uncle that's staying with her right now. And this is December the um 5th, 2020. Now y'all tell y'all tell me something. Is that I know I said I, I, in my mind I thought it was a relationship. So what do y'all what do what do y'all think now? <laughs> I'm just asking what, what do y'all think now? Now now he got his own apartment, got his own apartment now. Got his own apartment, and I told y'all he wrecked her car. Now, now, and he was giving her information concerning everything that I was doing, and now he's staying with her. So y'all, can y'all tell me? I mean, well, I know what old people used to say. You don't got to give me a whole uh, a whole haul before I realize I'm eating pork. So y'all tell me. That's all I'm going to say. Tell me. So now, the same uncle that ain't supposed to be around my daughter, because his murder with the judge, the judge ordered now, is now living with him and being around my kids all the time. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? That's something right there, ain't it? That's what I'm saying, y'all. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna go. I'm, I just want to bring y'all up to date with that because I'm gonna find out. I'm look. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna dig in all this and I'm gonna find out what's really going on here. And I'm gonna dig. And, and my most thing I want to find out is why she and what the. the uh, what what's the causes of the of my son's disability? You know why he she getting disability for him? That's the main thing I want to find out. 
what is his diagnosis? You know what I'm saying? Is it herb parsley? Because if it's herb parsley, I'm going to tell you right now, it's 100% lie. Because ain't no doctor going to tell no disability people that my son got herb parsley unless that mother told them that he was born herb parsley and they just going off of what she said. But his, but his medical records going to say something else. His medical record says how he got his arm was damaged, both his arms, at the time of birth. So we're going we gonna to go, I'm going to go research all of that. And I just want to keep y'all informed and up to date with all this stuff because you know what? This, this, when I tell you that woman is evil, I, just told, I told y'all how evil the woman was. She ain't, it ain't no benefit that she benefiting our children. You know, it ain't none of that. You know, she using to whatever income and whatever she can use the system for to get, and at the same time, want to sue me. Now she get, now she getting a disability check for one of my for my boy, and then she getting social security up on her own um, disability for my other two. So she getting social security for my other two under her own disability, and she getting a check, a disability check for my other boy. So, but then when I get them, they running around like they throw away children. And they running around with rags on, no no decent clothing, no decent shoes on their feet. And she getting all this money. And yet, and yet, um, still trying to sue me for child support. You know, let me tell y'all something just in case y'all saying this. I'm 100% take care of my children. 100%. I don't back down on taking care of my children. But I won't give that woman one penny because you know what? I know what that woman is about. And saying I know what her grimy lawyer is about as well and what he doing. Because let me tell y'all something what the Judge Stone ordered. In the, and and I, I was thinking about this this morning, so I thought about it. I said, wait a minute. A modification had already been done in the case of me and my ex-wife with our children. And the modification, and that was done by Judge Stone in the early parts of 18, 2018. Um, that the order was, that's how I got two file numbers, because the, the first file number was concerning my daughter. The second file number was concerning my other two um, children. So he get, so that's how I got two case numbers now. Two, one case number was for my daughter. The other case number was for my two boys. So the judge Stone consolidated that, right, and ordered that we have joint custody, right? Do what Judge Stone did now. That's why I say I ain't no judge before Sophia Crawford did anything to break my children's up. So Judge Stone know that we was already already had we already had joint custody for my daughter. So he made it as well for the, my two boys for us to have joint custody. That means she can't do nothing without me, and I can't do nothing without her. That's how it's supposed to be, right? All right, that's how it was. That's what was ordered, right? Now here come 2019. A year later, after that, Sophia Crawford took it upon herself. To strip me of my rights and and take my rights from me and give my children to um uh, um my ex wife and change them and change the modification again. Now, from my understanding, I thought I, now this is my understanding. Now, I thought any time a modification is to be changed, you had to take you had to write another new modification and go back to court, and you got to have grounds for wanting to change the modification. Now, I got all the now right now, I got all the grounds for modification. To take my children back from her. Yes, I do. Because that was from the day one that she had my kids. She ain't did nothing the court order says do. See what I'm saying? She ain't had, She hasn't done anything that the court order says do. And the only reason why I'm not running up to that courtroom and filing papers myself right now is because the evil um, clerk of courts workers up there, they, they, they pulling their hand against me as well. No judge's signature, no nothing. So that's the reason why I'm not taking upon myself because I know how to go up there and file the papers myself. I know how to do it. And if I, I, I tell y'all what, if I do do it, and if I don't get a lawyer, and if I go up there and do it, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to record, and I'm going to step I'm every step of the way. I'm going to let y'all know. I'm going to let y'all know before I leave here, I'm going to let y'all see the papers that I'm finna take and file, and I'm going to go up there and I'm going to file them. And I'm going to get the name of the clerk that took my papers and stamped my papers, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to show y'all all. Because you know you can't go in the courthouse with no phone. You can't go in there, no phone, or no no nothing. So I'm going to have to do everything before I go in and after I come out. So y'all just y'all keep up with me with this because it's finna go, it's finna go again. Because, and now, so, um, yeah, it, 
I'm just in search of a lawyer, and I want y'all help me in getting a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why I'm saying it, because I know going there doing it by myself, you know, I ain't got no chance with them crooked, wicked people up there. You know what I'm saying? So I want to have a lawyer that, and, and go back. And, and, and yeah, it's been to happen. I'm going all the way around, all, all the way around, and I ain't leaving nothing out. So, you know, that's just what it is right now. So, because, you know, it don't make no sense, you know, to hurt my children for the lack of your life and what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? And y'all see how lovely my children was here, all five of my children. Do y'all see anything wrong? You see how my children look? And this was, now look, that, if that video that I showed y'all concerning my five children, that was after she left me. That was my baby boy, four months old. Didn't I tell y'all that she left me? He was about four months old. See, he was four months old in, the, in that video. He was four months old starting holding his bottle. Y'all seen that video too? So yeah, you know, and then from the, from the, he was almost two years old when Judge Crawford stripped him from him, stripped my three children from him. So he went from almost four months old to about two years old. He was a couple of months. The judge, Sophia Cross, took my uh, script me from my children in uh, March of 2019. His birthday would have been July. It was in July, July 3rd, 2019. So a few months shy of being two years old, that's when the judge stripped me on my right for my own kid and broke my family up. Now, look, hurt my children. That only hurt. She, she hurt every one of my children. You know what I'm saying? And then going to make a statement out of her own mind. The judge made this statement. I quote this statement. That my three children need to bond with her adulterous children that she had an adulterous affair with. That they need to bond with, bond with her children. But let me take them away from the one they already bonded to. That's what Sophia Crawford done. And that's what she said out of her own mouth. And I got the records. I got look. Let me. I keep up with everything because you know why I keep up with everything because I know it's gonna come back. This evenness and what the evenness came at me and tried to take over, but the goodness is gonna go back and take over. The even the evenness came to take over and couldn't take over, but the goodness is gonna go and take over because let me tell you something. That's a wicked thing to do, you know, to hurt my children like that. And for the judge to put my children in this woman's care, at the, you know, being a mentally ill person, you know, that, that that's what I'm saying. Y'all can't see it. I ain't no judge before. I done went in, in front of judge before. Judge Tucker. I done went in front of judge Tucker that I got custody of with my daughter. I done went in front of judge Stone. I done went in front of judge Scott Brewer. I ain't never went in. I ain't went into every judge that would be for this woman. Sophia Crawford, I ain't thought about doing nothing like that to me. The best thing, they kept it going as it was already going. Split, um, joint custody, that everything. No, 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 no modifications other than to add my other two boys to the, to a, another, a new case. And say, her lawyer, you know all this. But now come back, come back with Sophia Crawford and, and she gonna modif do a modification that had already been done by Judge Stone. So how, I, my, what I don't understand, how can one judge make modifications? Because that's what the whole order was in the beginning of modifications. I, now, one judge made the modification, which was Judge Stone. He ain't here no more. Judge Stone ain't here no more. He's more county now being a, a real good judge. I hear, that, I hear that he's a superior court judge now. <laughs> and he needed to go there because, you know what, the, he's a good, I, me personally, I think he's a real good judge in following the law, and he did the, he just a good judge, you know, and but he already made the modifications back in eighteen, early part of 18, 2018. Now, now, and this is with the same thing. Now, ain't nothing changed now when it got to uh, Sophia Crawford. Ain't nothing changed. Then it got to Sophia Crawford. Ain't uh, her lawyer ain't put in for another modification. It was this was the same modification that, that this judge went off of. So. So you gonna make modification twice? One judge made a modification before you. Then now you gonna come and make modification after the same judge. Now so and and ain't no ain't, uh, her, uh, her lawyer Dave McGuire ain't made ain't filed no new modifications. You know what I'm saying? Judge ain't, he ain't filed no new modifications. So so the judge made another modification based on the fact that a modification had already been done. Modification earlier that year that Judge Stone had done. You know. Concerning my children. And then so then Sophia Crawford came along in 19 and made a modification. You can't, from my understanding, a modification can't be made unless it's filed. 
So won't no new modification filed after the modification. I don't know if y'all even understand what I'm saying, but I'm trying to understand it myself. The modification of Judge Stone, he made that modification in, I think, was it in March of 2018, somewhere February, somewhere in there, 2018. Well, anyway, it was right after the woman left me. She left me in 20, November 2017, and then I was in court in um January, January, February, somewhere in there, January, February, March. It was one of them months um, that Judge Stone made the modifications in the, in, in, in the new case. Then come down to... um. Judge Sophia Cross a year later. Now, she gonna come back and make modifications again without any filings. Won't no new filings filed on her on on on, on her, her her attorney side for any new modifications. Wasn't no he ain't filed no for nothing for no new modifications. So therefore, if I understand this right, Judge Crawford couldn't even make a modification when when the lawyer hadn't even presented a new modification. So she made a modification. That that she couldn't even do, but she done it. And if I understand the correction, that was the judge's error. If I understand, and if I be right, that's a judge's error to make a modification on top of a modification without the other party filing a new modification. Just like a contempt, contempt of court. When you file a contempt of court, uh, uh, I mean, you you file a contempt against your uh, a party, and and then it either gets dismissed or the judge um hear it. That's just like coming back with the same contempt and say, well, look, um, he did this thing again. Well, if he did it again, then you got to file a new contempt. You can't go off the same contempt, you know, that's already been dealt with. You know what I'm saying? That's the hottest thing happened with this modification in child custody. Judge Stone hadn't already addressed and modified it now. He already did the modifications. But then Judge Sophia Crawford come along and did a modification again without any new um, right without any new filings, so she did it up under the same filings and the and the same old modification. That's a judge's error because as a judge, and if, like I said, if I if I be right about what I'm saying, that's a judge's error. And being a judge, she know better than to modify do a, another modification on top of the same modification that's already judge before her, before her had done just a just a year before. Judge Stone did make that modification. And then um, Sophia Crawford come in 2019, stripped me on my right and make modification on the same modification that Judge Stone had done already modified. So I just want to, I, 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 look, I'm just trying to explain it to y'all the best I can. <laughs> That's all I'm doing here, trying to explain it the best I can. And so now, um, but see, y'all know this is a money thing with her. You're gonna sue me for alimony. I was struggling when she left me because I wasn't I wasn't even hardly working full time when she left me in D, in November 2017. And the dealership that I was respond that I was trying to get in place hadn't even got in place yet. You know what I'm saying? So, but you gonna leave me soon for child support alimony, which I had, which I y'all already know I had my kid for the two years she left me. You see, you see what I'm saying? And um. And then, um, man, I don't know what this thing here, but believe me, see, like I said, I'm going back through the files and I'm reading up and I'm catching up because I let a lot of it go because when I hired that lawyer, I didn't think I had to worry about going through no files no more because I'm like, my lawyer got it now. But when my lawyer dropped me off in court in the middle of this case, now, and, and that, that's about a year, I had that lawyer over a year. So now, now look, I got to go all the way back a year. And I gotta bring, I gotta catch up with all with my to my to me now. I gotta catch up and reading all this stuff and trying to catch up about what really what's really going on here and how in the world you going to court about me, but I'm not there. Cause see, my understanding that's what David McGuire said. He filed some papers to go in front of Judge Hohen in May of 2020. It's something I never knew about and never knew about. You know what I'm saying? That's why I had a problem. How you, if the if the if you if the case is about you, then why you ain't in court to hear the case? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So I didn't never hear nothing. It never got nowhere. So <clears throat> So now that's why when I come to y'all with this new stuff, I come to y'all with this new stuff based on the fact that I'm just catching up with stuff and learning stuff and reading the files, you know, and seeing, you know, who who been wrong here. And there's somebody covering up a lot of stuff here. 
But anyway, that's it. I just want to go and like y'all with that and thank y'all for hearing me. And I'll be when I catch up with some more stuff, I'll be come back and tell y'all. And thank you.